Hey, Chad Tomaszewski, you're Trident Communications. TSI Today, back in the studio filming. I'm Chad Tomaszewski, Chief Growth Officer with Trident Communications. We're talking to industry leaders about the technology that's changing their business. This is TSI Today. AJ, thanks so much for joining us on TSI Today. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Hey, um, been with Motorola for a little while, kind of a young guy in industry. We love seeing that. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role with, with Moto. So my role is, is uh, as an enterprise solution specialist. What that means is, you know, Motorola has this ever expanding growth of their kind of technology base, obviously known from their kind of cell phone days and now evolved yeah. into what we are today. So what I help do is I help navigate all of the different pieces of the portfolios to determine for any particular customer, which solutions best fit, what problems they may have in identifying those and, and kind of determining, you know, maybe they may think a solution is this form, but it may actually be present in a number of different forms that they may find more acceptable, but maybe different from what they're familiar with. So providing that familiarity with all of the different product bases kind of across Motorola's portfolio. And they're really vast now. I think Motorola has done a really good job of reinventing itself. You, you mentioned cell phones and obviously that's not part of their business <laughs> portfolio anymore, but I think a lot of our viewers might think of that, hello Moto, you no, know, that's absolutely. what they think of is that Motorola bit commercial that was so famous. Um, but it, it's bread and butter for decades and decades has been push to talk radio. Yep. Um, and really the Cadillac of the industry in many cases. Um, so. What we've seen in recent months or years, rather, is is an evolution of, of sorts with inside the ranks of Motorola, where we're seeing all sorts of different solutions coming out: CCTV, uh, some access control. The technology is unbelievable. Um, so, can you walk us through a little bit about safety reimagine? What is it at a really high level? Sure. So, when we when we talk about safety reimagine, right, and you referenced it earlier, our, our kind of core bread and butter has traditionally been this land mobile radio technology, right? So when we talk about all of the various technologies that are encompassed, we realize that when it comes to safety and, and operations critical or, or any kind of a, a critical communication, it encompasses so many different aspects of technology. So it's not just your communication side, but it's anything that is informing your end users of what kind of situational awareness events that are happening. So as you kind of stated, our, our portfolio has grown quite a lot to encompass a lot of these video security and analytics pieces as well. Obviously the video piece, the access control piece, and a number of different kind of critical communications pieces. Land mobile radio obviously being one, broadband push to talk being another key player in this kind of ecosystem. And realizing that situational awareness is so important for those who use our technologies. So all of these individual technologies exist, obviously in, in many different places outside of Motorola as well, but that situational awareness is really the key piece. So Safety Reimagined was really centered around how do we make sure that if you have the information that it is distributed out to the right personnel. So we take our video analytics solutions, we add those different working pieces available to be conveyed across your end, uh, any kind of communication, whether it's land mobile, broadband, or whatever you so choose. And that's really what kind of makes up the core of Safety Reimagine. So, so can Safety Reimagine really be construed as, as preventative? Absolutely. Right. We, so, we like to, to kind of stress it as a, a more proactive instead of a reactive scenario, exactly. right? As it always only takes one emergency to, to kind of bring to light some of the deficiencies. So historically, if we go back to kind of early days for security systems, we saw um, cameras or alarm systems, a basic alarm system yep. side of a business or a house, uh, made a whole bunch of noise, but it takes the police force from whatever respective city, uh, you know, uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe to show up. By that time, somebody's grabbed whatever they want and they've taken off. Absolutely. So we're really dealing with the mess after the fact. And traditional camera systems of sorts, again, somebody, we see a lot of it, catalytic converters right now. You know, yep. somebody comes and rips off catalytic converter, we're reviewing video of it happening the day before. With Safety Reimagine, we're actually able to alert a security professional that something is happening when it is actually going on. Absolutely. Good, and then loitering then as well, right? So if we have a, an area, let's say it's a mall, um, we have a, an area where perhaps vagrants have stopped um, and are putting up uh, areas for themselves to kind of loiter around that area and we want to clear them out. If people stay in an area for too long, will it be able to give them an alert for that? 
Absolutely, and, and that goes into you know a number of these different technologies that we've realized are such a big part of safety and operation critical communications, right? So making sure that not only are you potentially sending any kind of these video analytic events out to your communication system, but you may have them actually trigger other events kind of in the line, right? So you may have someone loitering or you may have maybe a banned individual that, you know, a disgruntled employee or, or whatever that may be. Well, that analytic may be able to set off a lockdown, right? Traditionally, you may have a full lockdown switch with an actual key that mm -hmm. you know inserts into a wall, and that's a very manual process. But you know how quickly that person's respond. You know, we're all just human, right? And we always have those abilities to to kind of fall into those fallacies sometimes, and, and no one's always available. So having all of that information kind of processed on the back end, no different than how you would do it today, but just having those be automated. Right, so it's really the key here. For, for our, our friends in the industrial space, in remote regions, northern Alberta, northern BC, can we have the analytics tell the difference between a two-legged human being and something with four legs, fur, and a whole bunch of teeth? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> you, you can go as granular as maybe how the different colors of clothing they're may, they may be wearing, or the different hairstyles, or whether or not they have different styles of facial coverings, right? There are a lot of different granular metrics that we can now pull in to this analytic software and really help provide that, that true situational awareness for how we respond in the event of an emergency. I really like the fact that we can determine if you know, a bear or a wolf were to come inside of uh, you know, an oil and gas site mm -hmm. uh, camp where there's people there and create an alert that we've got a bear there and then we have the professionals with inside the site go and address that bear, shoot it off so that we don't have an incident that there's somebody there I think is fantastic. Now of course the human element as well, um, facial recognition. Yep. Um, so if Chad's a bad fella and he's known for it, uh, maybe uh, I've gone into a mall and I've uh, committed a crime I'm in that mall several times and they don't want me in that mall anymore. Nice. They can have the facial recognition of Chad uh, show up there and then ultimately the second a camera picks it up it creates a radio alert through Safety Reimagined to let security know that somebody's not on site that shouldn't be. Exactly. And there's so many different technologies about yeah. that, right? It could be license plate recognition, it could be you know your, your true kind of facial recognition, it could even be as simple as this door is exit only yeah. and someone has entered. So unusual motion, all of those different styles of having the ability to capture that particular event are I, able to be transmission. I think my the one that blew my mind the most was that, and, and I think everybody will kind of get the idea of this, it was able to catch this. Uh, yes. I have no idea how you guys figured that out. <laughs> but it's, it's brilliant. So if we have somebody coming up to a mall, coming up to a school um, that has a firearm, Mm -hmm. It automatically can detect that person has a firearm and stop them. However, it goes one step further with your gate entries through airports, that kind of thing, doing metal detection. Yep. Uh, it can determine if somebody's got a concealed weapon and utilizing the whole safety reimagined program alert that we've got a potential security risk. Absolutely right. And, and you, you hit it right on the head. We have both brandished weapons and detection of that sort and concealed weapons as well. And both of those pieces are technologies that roll into our safety reimagined ecosystem to help provide that proactive piece of how do I respond. Where does it end from here? Like, it, there's so much you've encompassed inside of it. <laughs> Can you give us a, a snidbit of what might be coming next? Uh, I think a lot of it will will obviously depend on you know kind of the crazy world that we live in today. I know a lot of what we were we are kind of interested in and looking at is potentially, you know, how data driven the world is, right? And how many of those different metrics a lot of industrial businesses kind of rely on to provide that informed situation of how they're just daily businesses operating. So how do we integrate that into this overarching safety piece, right? Of making those informed decisions. So a lot of the maybe SCADA or IOT type products or obviously integrating a little bit more into our, our land mobile radio. So you, you may be more familiar with you know, your traditional land mobile radios, and then we have new kind of converged style devices, such as maybe a, a Moto Turbo Ion that lives in more of your commercial space, or maybe an Apex Next that lives in your, your public safety space. Excellent. Um, 
we're almost at the end of our time here. I have a question I like to ask all of our guests it's about bringing young people into our industry. Sure. But you're kind of a young guy in industry. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of me shaping this question in the fashion of how do you think we can recruit more young people, how did you get tied into the technology business? You have an interesting path. Yeah, so, so actually I have an engineering background. Uh, I actually came from, prior to Motorola, I came from a defense contractor. And, and part of the, the pieces that drove me to Motorola is, you know, being from a defense contractor, it's always, how do you kind of benefit the greater good? How do you work towards a common space for everyone to live and be comfortable in the space that they're living in? So for me, moving into the Motorola space, it's kind of an easy transition, right? A company that's now largely focused in safety and security and being able to provide that to, you know, not only the, the federal governments or, or local and state governments, but the people that you see day to day, you know, the businesses that you actually convenience and are able to interact with, right? Having that kind of direct viewpoint into, I have impacted this particular business today right. with the technologies and the products that I help, you know, either strategize or design or, or help, you know, make available to those particular businesses. So for me, it was really, you know, and I think a lot of young people may share this, is kind of that sense of, of meaning to what you would like to do. And for me, it was, you know, being able to provide that security to the people I interact with daily. That's cool. And that, of course, directed your path down technology. So if you had a young person in pride in you today and wanted to get into the technology business, would you tell them, go investigate getting your engineering degree? Would you encourage them to get involved with an organization that supports technology like a Tridon? What, what's the easiest path for someone to do that, do you think? For me, it would absolutely be getting involved in, in something like a Tridon, right? Because you get a lot of that kind of firsthand experience, right? You know, when you're, a lot of times when you may work for a corporate business, you don't always get that kind of strict customer facing impact. But when you work with, you know, a Tridon, you know, someone who does touch the businesses kind of very intimately that you interact with day to day, I, I think that's an excellent opportunity because you can see firsthand how those solutions impact instead of, you know, maybe necessarily being tied to a desk, right? Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, AJ. Uh, before we go, though, uh, for our viewers, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or be able to connect with you, how can they do that? Sure. So if you would like to reach me, you can find me on LinkedIn at Alec Uy, A-L-E-C-U-Y. And I'll be more than happy to, to have a discussion with anyone. Awesome. AJ, thanks so much. Thank you for having Thank me. You. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching TSI today. Catch up with us next time when we learn more about technology changing business today.